Okay, so welcome to this next and uh, last part uh, about this lecture on competitive advantage. So we've talked about what a competitive advantage is and the role that information systems play in decision-making processes to leverage that competitive advantage. We've also looked at how information and information systems can be used to, um, to take a closer look at your own business, to examine the value chain and to identify uh, how to fit those two together. And so the next step is to look at information systems more as a model to generate income themselves. So previously we've talked about information systems as a way to support your organization or to support your competitive advantage, for example, by reducing costs or developing new services. So now let's take a look at information systems, not as something that supports your business, but as an actual part of your strategy to generate income. So the picture I show you here in the background is from China and uh, we'll come back to that a couple of more times. But in China, uh, information systems and, and services have been are very well present throughout society. It has become a standard way to uh, pay for services, to order services and products. So essentially from high from big corporations to a person selling uh, veg vegetables and roots on the streets, all of them are using information systems as part of their strategy. Um, and taking that a bit further and looking at specific revenue models, so models, approaches that will generate income for you, there's different ways that you can do that with information systems. So a revenue model essentially tells, in, in general, it tells you how you would generate income from an investment you've made previously. And there's a lot of ways to do that. You could you know, get a return on investment. You can get uh, um, uh, interest on a, a loan provided. You could get uh, income based on products you sell that you've transformed uh, into, like you've transformed resources into products and you will get uh, paid to deliver when people buy these products from you. Um, so those profits, again, those are different methods of generating revenue. And in information systems nowadays, there are specific models that are a bit different from purely labor-based or capital-based. Those models for information systems, they are based essentially on information. So examples of that is marketing and affiliate marketing. People pay money to use information to do their marketing. Uh, essentially the same with advertising. Uh, people pay for certain services such as a scripting or to use certain pieces of software with licensing. It could even be because people use your platform that they will pay a transaction fee or a pay a fee because you brokered a relationship between them. Um, traditional sales that are happening online or freemium models. So I guess with if affiliation and advertising, you probably know services like Google Ads or Facebook, social media platforms that essentially their revenue model is selling the platform uh, as, a, as a method for other people to advertise their products. Uh, so that's the revenue model is advertising. Uh, I hope I'm not surprising you with that. I hope you know that essentially that model is not to give you free services, but to make sure you use a free service to generate data and thus uh, making them an interesting partner for other people to, to use them for advertising. Subscription. You probably know Netflix or Spotify or any of these other services where you pay a certain amount to get a service and information or digital service in return. Licensing, uh, for example, you pay Microsoft a fee to use Windows on your computer or to use a certain piece of software in your own products and services. Uh, companies pay uh, big corporations when they develop their own products to be able to use licenses so they can develop on their platforms. We'll talk a bit more about licensing in the chapter on acquiring information systems. So transaction fees, think of Uber. Uber doesn't drive cars themselves, uh, they're not, uh, or Uber Pop specifically, or Lyft, but they do charge you for making a connection between you and the driver. So that's a transaction fee. You pay a certain amount for a transaction you conducted on their platform. 
you could also look at PayPal, for example. You, for every transaction, there is a small fee that goes to PayPal for a successful transaction. And the freemium model is an interesting one. Uh, that is something you see nowadays more and more. It's essentially a combination of different aspects. Um, it is a bit of marketing, advertising, but also licensing subscription uh, that is being offered. So freemium means that you are giving certain services for free to build an interest, to build a large customer base, to make people uh, interested in your services and even a bit dependent on your services but not all the features are available or only for a limited time or with some limitations and you have to pay to remove them. So essentially you can use the platform for free, but if you wanna use all the features or you wanna use it for an unlimited amount or with more users or whatever, you have to pay more. And that's what we call the freemium model. So an example is Spotify. You can listen to Spotify for free, but you will get advertising. If you wanna listen longer or you wanna listen without advertising, you have to pay a certain fee. Uh, YouTube is a similar example, YouTube Premium. You can look for YouTube videos for free, but you will get some advertising. Uh, if you wanna use it for ad free or you wanna to listen to purely music, you have to pay the fee and you get YouTube Premium. And um, that brings me to the next part that is uh, an interesting and now revenue model you see a lot, platform-based business models and sharing economy. Um, we'll come back to that as well in the chapter on e-commerce in more detail. But to give you an introduction, a platform-based economy is, is and a sharing economy uh, is a service that is provided in which the provider themselves, they don't offer the products or they offer the services, but rather enable other providers to offer their service. So it's essentially a digital marketplace where supply and demand are being met. So when you talk about products, think about, for example, of Bolt.com or Amazon. They don't offer products themselves or to a limited amount, but rather allow other sellers to offer their products and buyers to go online and buy them from them. So they're a broker. Same goes for Airbnb and Uber. When you talk about services for pay, payments, PayPal, they, uh, you know, they're not a bank themselves, but they allow you to link your credit card so you can use them as a uh, service or platform where uh, payment providers or uh, banks with credits and people who want to, uh, who need to be paid can be linked together. Investment, Kickstarter. Kickstarter doesn't invest themselves or into a limited amount in the, in the projects, but rather allows investors and people who are seeking investment to meet up. Uh, we previously talked about Wikipedia and essentially you could say that's also a platform because some people bring knowledge, other people need knowledge and Wikipedia brings those together in their platform. It's not per se a commercial operation, but it's still a platform based uh, approach. And so there are several examples of that as well. If you take that one step, uh, another model you could look at is a uh, revenue model is a service-based economy. So in the previous, in the platform-based economy, you are not the one who are offering the products and services, but rather you offering a platform where supply and demand can be met and you charge a transaction or brokerage fee. Another way that information systems are transforming business models is towards a service-based economy. So let's take an example of groceries. So before you used to go to a shop or a supermarket and you would do shopping in person. That has transitioned, especially nowadays, into home delivery or pickup service. So we're going from you know, being needing to go to the store to rather the store coming to you and providing you the service of delivering to your home. Of course, it also reduces costs for them because they don't need to shell things, they need to unpack things. It's, it's a more efficient operation. So again, differentiating and cost strategy. Uh, but you could even go one further instead of saying, well, if I'm doing groceries, I still have to think about what I wanna cook, what ingredients do I need, a recipe and so on. So you also have these meal boxes where that thinking has been done for you. So rather than doing groceries and trans you know, thinking about what dishes to make, they go with, here are the dishes you made and these are the ingredients you need. So it's really a more a service based on what your actually needs are, which is to cook a meal. Your needs are not to get the groceries, your needs are to cook a meal for which you need groceries. And so that transformation, getting closer and closer to the actual services that people want is a service based economy. 
The other example I gave you, and I'll come back to that again, are the food trucks. So street food is pretty common in Asia, and uh, this is from a market in Xi'an in, in China, uh, where you could go into the streets and you can buy some food. And these are stalls in a certain area. So that has been transformed in like, okay, for street food, you know, uh, you need to go to a certain place, uh, it needs to be set up. So let's use food trucks so that we can move those food fairs, those street food places, venues around, and we can offer that, uh, you know, depending on where people are or is there, if there's a certain festival. Taking that one step further, now thinking about the corona is uh, outbreak, is thinking about, oh, wait a minute, that's not possible. How do we transform that into a service? So we come to that drive-in through concept that I mentioned in the beginning. So again, what is it that, you know, how do we get people to get that service that, you know, those aspects of free street foods, but make it easier and easier and closer to the circumstances and the needs of the people, which is to keep distance, stay in the car, and, but still be able to get that, you know, uh, street food feel and vibe. And so that's the transformation you see a lot. And a lot of these developments are happening, especially now, uh, because there's a lot of startups and new business models being implemented now. And information technology plays an important role in that. Uh, as I said before, the platform-based uh, approach is one of them. So you see a lot of platforms now that are being put into place that allow people to connect with each other. So a platform allows other people and users to connect and to create a certain value or pro exchange a product or service. It doesn't always have to be a business or commercial. Here in the Netherlands, there is this platform Corona Hulp uh, with NL for elkaar, where people who want to help and people who need help can meet up. So platform based. Another example that you often see that is now happening is cutting out the middleman. Um, because uh, the economy is disrupted, stores are closed, is that people will are looking for ways to directly connect with suppliers and essentially cutting out sorry, distributors or people in between. So here is a, is a website that you can find that says support your, support your local entrepreneur or your local business. Uh, something that's also very trending in the time of Corona. And this one shows you where all the farmers are that are selling products in your neighborhood. So you can go directly to the farmer and buy, buy products off of them. Uh, of course, here's also again the platform uh, element into it. But essentially what I wanted to show with this example is cutting out a middleman and saying go directly to the, um, to the consumer. So we call, also call this disintermediation. It's something we'll come back to the, in the chapter of e-commerce. Uh, but cutting out the middleman is something that information technology enables because you remember the five forces you can go directly to competitors to companies there's no need to use distributors or intermediaries anymore uh, another uh, example of these new business models are subscriptions so uh, not buying products anymore, but rather buying services and paying a monthly fee for it. And of course, in these day and age, uh, being at home all the time, Netflix and other video streaming services are a great example of that. So they sell subscriptions and they, you know, it makes it quite easy. Information technology makes, makes it easy to buy that subscription because you just need to click a form, enter your credit card details and you're done. Uh, and even Netflix now has 15 or 16 million more subscribers be, since the Corona outbreak. So that subscription based economy is, is uh, an important one. Um, now, especially nowadays with information technology, it makes it easier uh, to subscribe to things. However, on the other side, some subscriptions are also suffering in the Corona outbreak because people are in an uncertain situation and they can't, they don't want to commit. Uh, a best example of that is sports schools or gyms that are actually losing subscriptions. But when it comes to technology, we'd rather pay a fee and have the freedom to choose what our content rather than deciding on per product basis, especially if it's something we're gonna use for a while. And another example is on-demand services that we see now on the increase. And, then, and the best example, well, I'm not saying the best example, but a good example is online education. So on-demand services, rather than uh, traditional services or products, those traditional services and products are delivered to you when you, you know, at a certain 
fixed time and interval. For example, a lecture will happen Wednesday morning, 8.45. And if you want to follow it, you have to be there. With on demand, it's the other way around. You decide when you want to consume that service or product. So you can watch the lecture at your convenience. So on demand means that the moment you demand it, you have access to these services. Uh, and that is also something that is being enabled by information technology and information systems, but especially relevant uh, these days because you know people are at home and they, they can't travel anywhere. So we're putting content, we're putting uh, information available to people and they can consume it when they want. If you remember from chapter five, this is essentially the same as asynchronous communication. You get to access the information the moment and the place you want it. And that's delivering that value, that making that part of your business model is on-demand services. So one of the parts that we need to uh, talk about is then, uh, we talk about this as well in the chapter about security is vendor lock-in. Uh, because we are subscribing to platforms, because we're subscribing to services, because we're listing things, we're installing apps, means that we're slowly being pulled into an ecosystem. Um, Microsoft is a good example for that. If you install Windows, you know, a logical next step would be to use Office, also OneDrive, uh, Outlook, all these other systems that are behind it. And even for organizations and companies, once you start with a certain choice in services and products, you probably get locked in, hence the name vendor lock, into an ecosystem. Not necessarily saying that that has to be a bad idea, but it is something worth considering. Um, so with subscriptions, um, one element that draws you in is the fact that, it, you know, there is a whole ecosystem of other applications, tools, services around it that makes you stay within that company. And it is actually often part of a business strategy uh, because it allows you to upsell your other services once people are on your platform. Once you're on YouTube uh, with the freemium model, you can get people to pay for premium uh, things. And it might be easy for them to transition to other services that Google or other systems that Google offer from Facebook to WhatsApp to Instagram. All those systems, they connect in some way with each other, uh, getting you more ingrained in that ecosystem and uh, locking you in. Uh, then let's go to the final part of this, uh, this chapter, which talks about innovation. So once you have this new idea, uh, once you, you see the opportunities, how do you actually uh, build on those and in integrate them into your company? And if you don't find those opportunities, how can you look for them? So let's talk briefly about innovation. 